you are welcome to my channel today i'll be talking about lazarus syndrome lazarus syndrome some call it lazarus phenomenon this is a syndrome that is not so defined until the late 20th century that is around 1980s thereabout no much about this in the literature the history is such that there was a religious story of a man named Lazarus who was dead for about four days but was miraculously raised from death after four days here it is called Lazarus syndrome because the affected individuals would have been declared dead after CPR. But surprisingly, either on the trolley or stretcher to the mark, he or she will be back to life. The scenario is this. Code Blue is caught in the hospital, right? For those who have the directive for resuscitation, right? Because some don't need resuscitation anymore for whatever you know, trouble they run into. Or is not in the hospital and the field playing soccer or anywhere where there is cardiac arrest. Then ACLS will be instituted. Correct. There will be a team leader, right? Everybody is playing one role or the other. One is doing CPR, the other one is giving medication, the other one is taking care of the ventilation. Correct. Another one is recording. Mm -hmm. After a while, the team leader will call it off. The affected individual is presumed dead. But in Lazarus syndrome, hours later or minutes after being presumed dead, either already been packed or rolled into the mug or whatever, he or she is found breathing again. But what? Yeah, that's what Lazarus syndrome is all about. It's a surprise. Already declared dead after CPR has failed, now he or she is alive. Scientifically, it is all about the delayed return of spontaneous circulation after cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Here on my channel, you are going to find all the necessary info already published on basic life support, advanced cardiac life support, and pediatric advanced life support. So check my channel for that, please. There are certain times that I want to discuss before we move on. Death. Some people would define that in some literature as clinical death. Means an irreversible stoppage of all functions in the human body. So all systems are no longer working. That is death or clinical death. So there will be cessation of pulse, cessation of heart sounds, and no breathing. The brain death, which some call biological death in some literature, is a situation where the brain is no more functioning as the grand commander of all organs in the body. No cerebra, cerebellar, or brainstem functional functions any longer. So the sensory, the mental state, the motor organ, gait motor coordination organ, reflexes organ. This is irreversible. No fixed criteria for the diagnosis stipulated yet that I know of. Uh, this is helpful in the phase of organ donation because individual with brain death with life support can still have the organs invested for donation. Then another term is locked in syndrome. Here, the affected person can think, can hear, can see, but only the eyes, muscles will show some level of activity 
the rest of voluntary muscles are paralyzed. Wow. So, the person in Logden syndrome will hear people discussing about their own fate. Oh, she's dead. No, she's not dead. No, we're going to put her in more. No, we're going to satisfy her dead. And so, that's horrible, right? Then the vegetative state. They are awake, but no signs of awareness. Or there's a return of arousal without signs of awareness. They can open eyes with basic reflexes, for example, blinking, when there's a loud noise around them, but they do not respond to command. Coma is another term. Here, no sign of being awake at all. They have their eyes closed. They are not responding to the environment. They are not responding to command. Now, the probable cause or causes of Lazarus syndrome. Return of spontaneous circulation is possible about 10 minutes after CPR. I mean, after you've stopped your CPR, it's possible to have return of spontaneous circulation even 10 minutes after. So if you cut it off, and you pack immediately, you might have Lazarus syndrome. So with Lazarus syndrome, we actually have full and good recovery. But we are not certain as by the cause or causes of Lazarus syndrome per se. This is not a case that is reported often. Why that? It might be because it's embarrassing to everyone involved, or perhaps it's not occurring that often. I would choose the latter. Because if you said, okay, it's because it's embarrassing to everyone involved, the family members won't keep quiet, either out of excitement or anger, excitement because they have their family members back, right? Or anger because they pronounce their beloved one dead, sent him or her to the morgue already, only to get there and fill up some paper, and then it, the family might say, hi, I'm right here, don't fill that paper. Oh. Okay, still on probable cause or causes of Lazarus syndrome, during CPR, there will be pressure buildup in the chest. But upon stoppage of CPR, the pressure will be released. And that will inform the probability of the fact that the heart will then have the chance to start. Another hypothesis is that because there's decreased venous return and you are giving your intravenous medications during ACLS, later on, when you stop your CPR, and there is enough venous return, returning with the medications you've administered, it will hit the ad and start it off. Like adrenaline, you've given in IV, but it's not reaching the heart until you stop your CPR and later on, slowly, the venous return, along with the medication has reached the heart right now, then adrenaline effects will come up. Or there's hyperkalemia. That alone can be responsible for the delay return of spontaneous circulation. Now, differential diagnosis. It could be cardiac arrest. It could be brain death with all the causes, but I will go into details of that in another presentation entirely. Could be hypothermia. So check the temperature and have one blanket. Could be locked in syndrome. Could be metabolic encephalopathy. Could be polyneuropathies or drug intoxication. And sometimes might even be both brain dead and somatic death. Now, prevention of a Lazarus syndrome. My channel is based on prevention of suffering 
and debt as much as we can. We have to know the medical diagnosis before the cardiac arrest. That will guide how we quickly cut it off or not when we are not winning with CPR. We have to rule out reversible causes. I will not go into the details right here because I have that included when I publish my presentation on ACLS. You can just check my channel for that. We must rule out toxins like drug overdose or poison, like cardiorespiratory uh, target drugs that could you know, cause cardiorespiratory depression, benzodiazepine, barbiturates, anesthetic agents, and so on. Just take the time to check the temperature because hypothermia might be responsible. And all we need to do is have a warm blanket to cover the patient up. And we must check the blood pressure. Okay, still on prevention of Lazarus syndrome, since this is embarrassing to healthcare professionals, then let's take all the precautions, please. Full neuro examination, sensory motor reflexes, and have certain tests done if your center, that is your hospital, is that sophisticated to get them done. For example, you can have EEG done, then you can have brainstem auditory evoke potential done. You can do a routine test, CT angiography, magnetic resonance angiography. You can have transcranial Doppler. Cerebral angiography could be done, and of course, apnea test. There will be a separate presentation on apnea test to be published by me very soon. Still on preventive measures to save ourselves from Lazarus syndrome, there should be observation time before declaring after CPR that that individual is dead. Although there's no fixed time to observe before that declaration, but in all, we should not rush to give up and send the patient to the mark. No, some recommend 24 hours from the time of cardiac arrest before you know, we send the patient to the mall. Some will say 12 hours for anyone between ages 1 to 18. And some will say 48 hours for infants between ages 1 week to 2 months. And for adults, some recommended 6 hours. Depending on what is happening, you know your jurisdiction. Don't rush. At least 10 minutes after stopping CPR, before sending that patient to the monk. And we have to support the families. Why that? The emotions will be running, right? And remember that viability would diminish with increasing time when it comes to organ donation, organ arrest, and so on. Still on prevention. Know that brainstem reflexes can recover after three days. I'm not suggesting here that you should hold that body on the couch for three days. No. Why not? Viability for organ donation would diminish you know, with time. There should be algorithm, that is my suggestion. There should be algorithm by each jurisdiction, or at least World Health Organization should help all of us to standardize this, so that Lazarus syndrome will not be occurring again. Still on preventive measures, some factors will play a key role or roles here. Like, it depends on the resources available around us, right? When ventilators, life support gadgets are not enough for everybody that would need it and CPR has been done for a long period of time there's a tendency for the physicians to pull their heads together with the nurses to say let's give up someone else would need this <laughs> financial issues some countries are so nice to their citizens they pay for all cost of health-related issues, not so 
in many countries, when families can't afford it, mm -hmm, some run into big insurance you know, bills and so on. Of course, emotions. Here, there will be a big issue. Family members will be saying, no, don't stop life support. Medical teams will be saying, it is enough. We've done enough. Let's talk about organ donation and so on. Of course, the ethics. Father, I have known or I've had over a case that involved being you know, taken to the court, lawyer invited, you know, taking the case to judge. The judge is the one who finally made the determination that life support should be taken off. All these, you no, know, they sound theoretical, right? They are real, okay? And of course, the protocol in your hospital and medical legal issues. So all these will play a lot of role or roles in determining when to stop CPR and when to send the patient to the morgue. Declaration of death. Who does that? Well, it depends on your jurisdiction also. It's because this can prevent Lazarus syndrome. A neurologist, two physicians, a nurse with a physician, or in some jurisdictions, a nurse is enough to declare that the patient is dead. Or you just find out who does what in your jurisdiction. Because that will help. When more people will have gone through and you've created enough time after CPR, before declaring the person dead, before wrapping him or her up and sending the body to the mark, if everybody would have gone through, then less Lazarus syndromes will be occurring. That's my assumption. In conclusion, let's just have a teamwork. That's it. The SLS team leader will make that determination to stop CPR and the next step that will follow, but let team members, that is nurses and doctors, help the team leader to arrive at that decision that truly well done. Substitute decision maker will be on ground. Let there be that agreement by you know, carrying him or her along from the onset. The legal team could be involved. In fact, some families will actually take the case to court. I've seen that. Hospital protocol, like I've suggested, let there be an algorithm. Now, it might be province-wide, state-wide, country-wide, you know, heads regional, uh, head zones, whatever. Let there be standardized way either from the onset of the cardiac arrest or immediately you think you are not winning as by the CPR before giving up and sending the patient to the mall. So with that, I've come to the end of this rare, very rare, but it's still occurring phenomenon known as Lazarus syndrome. I hope we'll be able to prevent this, though not so common, but the few ones that have been recorded are embarrassing. Embarrassing to the head establishment, embarrassing and shocking to the family members. Thanks for listening. Remember to share this representation. Remember to subscribe to my channel so that I can get all my presentations immediately they are published. Even the new ones that I'm going to publish very soon after the very presentation, like apnea test, locked-in syndrome, vegetative state, and so on. I appreciate it.